Salut coders, this is Piski here. Welcome back to another tutorial. And in this tutorial, I will want to talk more about the REST API. And it's something that is maybe new to you, but you want to know how to implement it in Quakas. So right now, maybe you are not understanding uh, this REST API, this class which is creating controller. You are not familiar of what is controller. You are not familiar of request mapping. You are not familiar of REST controller and what is gate mapping so i want to explain more so that you can have a better understanding and you can also then read uh, for a better and for you to get a better knowledge so what i can do this is powerpoint that i want to share with you when you are talking about rest api let's think of you have a mobile phone or your own computer and there's a screen that you can see and that screen it's written register or you want to register a user on that screen so there are details that are being that are being shown like username email details of a user first name and last name and your password so you want to send this information to your server and your application is running on the server and then once you receive those details you want to validate the details if they are correct then you can save here in this database so they say there are things that are being done here when you are sending a request you are sending a request in a, as a rest or as a soap but in this tutorial we want to send the request as a rest so in, in form of a rest we can either send as a json or xml so i didn't add xml because we are sending request as a json so i want you to more familiarize with the json so when it is when you are sending a request as a as a json to your server via H via http rest you either send either as a post put get delete all these are types of http methods so when sending a request it must you must specify the method so far there are many we have also page but consider this as the common because we are talking of a crude so if we are talking of a crude we are talking about create read update and delete so based on the crude which one corresponds to a crude for for a post it means create maybe you, you want to create a new user to the database this is our this is our database so if you want to create a new user to this database you have to send a request as a post so if you want to update an existing record Let's say a user is now there, you did sign up today and tomorrow you don't want to sign up again. We know that your record is, is now there because you confirmed by your email address. You need to update the, the record. So by doing that, you use a put. Maybe you want to update first name and last name. So you can create a method to update with those details that you want to update. So if you want to get your record like your profile, you want to get the details that you saved like your first name last name this information are being stored in a database think of a database like a, like if you have a book like a storage if you have a book maybe at school you you are writing notes think those notes as your database because you when you're writing for the first time that's the post when you when you're updating some of the information that's the put when you delete something in that notebook, you are deleting. So delete is the way of removing that record in the database. So you want to delete your profile in the database that you already created. So for a post, uh, think of this postman and the postman is given an envelope. And this envelope, I is, I'm saying it, it's a payload because in the envelope, there's something that is there means your profile that json that json that json body we are talking about and the postman is going to submit this information to your server so this is our registration form someone will fill these details first name last name email password and confirm password then you click register now so this for the first time i told you use a post and via http rest and the format will be json and this is our server in our server you create a new record with the uh, in the database this is our database and these are the records 
for put let's say you have a profile you can see here you have your profile maybe you want to update a few details like first name or you want to update your your surname then you can use a put method and in the database you are just updating the record for a get we know that there's a record in this database with your details like your email address is going to be unique so or your username so you want to get that record that is already there so you can use a get method to get that information from this database so your application will be running on this server and it will put the records from the database and retrieve if the record does not exist it throw an error for a deleting let's say you want to delete your profile from the database you no longer want to use that application so you click the delete button and the method remember it's going to be delete and the record will be removed from from the database as simple as that so when you are sending this request as a payload think a payload as a body that you are transfer over the internet or over http so if it's um, a we can send we it's advisable to send this body as a in a put method or in post method nowadays get is now supporting the po, the the body but don't use body in the get just use uh, don't use don't put any body in the get method because it's complicated you are not doing what's supposed to do the get is supposed to retrieve information so you are getting something from the database you are getting something that is already there or you are looking for something and you want to know if that something is already there and you can use your get method so when you are sending this record let's say post and put and post and put you can either send as an xml or as a json the xml is with these tags uh, this angle brackets with the with the model that you want to uh, with the parent root and it will have to close below here and if it's a student here you can put the first name last name certificates but it's complicated so that's why i'm saying i don't i don't want to prefer or to teach you using xml we are going to choose json the json is simple you just open a bracket and close the bracket in that in in the body in your json body you just specify the name of the field or the parameter that you want to send if age is 30 city new york is children it's false and these values are the Da, these are the data types integer string boolean string and this is in a json this is an array with the uh, titles with the list of engineer programmer and this is as simple as that so it's a key value pair your key is the name of the field that you identify on your uh, java object and the value so the key if it's in, if it's an integer in your object is supposed to be integer age supposed to be an integer and this field must match to your object so as i told you when sending request to a backend it's either a, you can get an error or you don't get an error and uh, there are also status code that are already there so with this status code these are the most common status code the first hundred they call them informational and the 200 it means success it means when you are requesting information to your backend if you get 200 the code start with 200 to 299 it means it's a success when you are now get a 300 maybe you are now redirected to another server so 300 to 399 it's about redirection for 400 to 499 it's client error five to five to five hundred ninety nine it's a what it's a safer error so the most common ones is the four uh, like uh, four hundred maybe when sending when creating a request uh creating a user we specify that we need a username but a use like a, a front-end developer do not provide a username so that request is invalid because our json object does not have that few, that field username so i i you retain 400 means 
the client and send an incorrect details so if it's 401 it's because of security user must be authenticated and we can cover that in future videos so 404 is the common one maybe you want to get a user on your database by username or email and the record does not exist it's not there or the user is not yet registered you can return 404 so 404 not exist i'm just telling you the most common ones for two we have 200 200 it means success usually we use it when you're getting when you are getting records 201 when new record is created either post or put and on 204 it's a success but without any content in the json body you are supposed to you have you don't have to retain anything in the body and then informational these are not we are not i don't think we are going to cover any uh, informational on this tutorial course so these are the all things that i wanted to show you about uh, about the rest and for you to familiarize with this rest so let's go to our project that we created on the previous video so on our previous video you see when the project was created we got this thing i think now you can now start to you are now understanding this for get mapping get mapping because it's the same as the method get method like what i showed you here so this was the get method so this was the get method so in in when you're using quackers and for, if you want to get an existing record that is already there we just use get method so that's why you see here we say get mapping so get mapping means you are getting a record so for 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 post mapping we just say post make ma mapping like this for put mapping we just say put mapping for delete mapping we just say delete what delete mapping that's all what you have to do so let me undo this and let's create our new endpoint which is called a user controller i want to delete everything here so we want to create a new method and, and let's create a new class called user controller i want to show you all the all the way of creating a record so here you you see we have to say at rest controller so by specifying this rest controller it will know that this this class is receiving requests via http rest api so we, it will start to you have to add things like now our method http method and here request mapping so request mapping when the request gets into the into the server we are now mapping it so here it's going to be users so the first thing we want to create a user so let's create a new method called public create for now i just say response entity we have to specify this response entity and you can put a question mark so far we don't know which object we are supposed to retain so we just put a question mark and we say create then for a return i told you if you are creating a record or updating a record it's better to return 200 or 201 so for me i prefer to use response entity status code http status created so here it will return a status code 201 like what i told you if you are if you are working with this rest you must know the response code that you are supposed to return to your user so if some of the information that you require is invalid you can return 401 so what we can do now so i told you this is not enough because we want to create a, a user so here we need to specify a method which is a post mapping once we specify this our request is going to be users and method type is going to be post so 
if we are done with this i told you yeah let me open here if if we are doing a post mapping i told you we need to send a request as a json as you can see here so we need to send this request as json in this format so our our api must be able to receive this request as a json so how does it know in quarkus that this is a json body so let me show you how we can do this we can open our project and here we need now to specify how the the structure of the json so here i want to create a new package and i call this package model and i want to create a new java class which is a record in this one i can say register user record so when registering a user we must know that we must send a username so a username is of type string we want to send a request or we want to send a password so it's a it's of type string again we want to send an email of a user and we want also to send a first name and last name so these are the few details that we need when sending a request when we are send when we are creating a user user so just copy this and let's go to our user controller in our user controller we have to import this our method so this method it means this create for post mapping it's going to receive a json with these fields username password email first name and last name so but it's not enough because for this to work we need to add another annotation called a request body So after adding this annotation at request body, it it will convert this that JSON that you are going to send. It will convert the JSON, the format of this JSON will be converted to a Java class. So you can see this it has a age seat as children. So these are the details that you are supposed to add to your Java class. But for ours is different from this one because you want to add to send username first name last name uh, email and password so let's come back again to our class and let's try to run this application and the url of this its users our application is started if you go to resources on the previous tutorial i showed you the root url is going to be learning so this is going to be our url so let's just copy this url and copy it to postman so i this one it's a post mapping if we come back to our user controller it's a post mapping it means our method it's a post so let's come here and we can change this to post and i told you our root our path here if you open this it's going to be learning so you need to copy this path if you or if you edit this path then you just say learning and so far it's not enough we need to come to our rest to our user controller we have this endpoint the request mapping is starting with users so we need to come here again and copy that users and paste it here after pasting this pasting it here we need to add a body you can see this is our payload we need to come here at a body and we want to send it as a json 
So for JSON, these are the other formats that you can send to your backend. And I can select this JSON. Here you can see we have JSON with the XML, we have HTML, but for us we are using JSON. So for JSON, I told you the format is to open a bracket like this. And these are the fields that you want to send username. And the username is going to be Bisky. Password. I can say one, two, three, four. Email. It's going to Bisky at gmail.com. Then first name it's going to be bisque so this is how you can send your request to your backend server at this url learning and your rest endpoint its users so if i try to send this we will get a 201 it means a record has been created so far we didn't implement the logic to save these details in the database so what i can do here i can just say i can print something and i can say user or a username equals to and we can we want to see this i can say register record dot username we can get this username and i can send a request here so if i come here as you can see here this is the username that is here this is the username so if you want also to retain that same object we just say okay here and we can say register it will retain this board let's remove this build and let's test our endpoint we are going to get the same if i do this you can see what we have and it's just going to be the same we are going to have the same record also here which is okay the request how we send it and you can get the same response so this is the post so let's talk about the updating let's say we want to update something so for us to update something you have to copy so let's say you want to update a first name or a, so let's say we just say update profile let's create a new record just copy paste i'll just say update so here we don't want to update everything we just want to update username we don't want to update it we want to update the first name and last name only so maybe you you think of adding maybe age or a date of birth we just say int edge we can we can just say edge or we can add edge just if we want to update a profile so after doing this we come to our user controller and let's duplicate this or for you to understand better maybe if i write public remember response entity because you want to get a response so that's why it's a response entity and here let's say we want to retain this record the details that we already that we updated then we say update profile then this is our request body so in our request body we are talking about i told you if you add this we need to add say a request body remember we have a re to add a request body whenever we are when you are working with post mapping and put mapping then here 
we want to retain the created also so let's say this is the the record that we want to update we just want to retain the same remember status code it's going to be a uh, 201 and here we need to change this to put mapping and in our put mapping we just say update profile this is going to be our endpoint for updating the profile so we need to come back here and uh, just add those few details if you come to our postman let's copy our url it's just going to be the same and let's copy here we need to change our method to put and you can paste this here and here i said update profile so in our update profile remember our body is going to be raw and of type json and with only few fields let's just copy these fields and you can paste these fields here so we don't need we don't need this last name username we we added few first name last name and age and then age it's an integer so if it's an integer it's not supposed to be in double quotes i can just say age 31 so this is our put mapping then we can send a request you can see this request is there and we got a success response from our from our backend so this is how you can update a record so let's continue this is how you can update your rest and we want to get an existing record so to get an existing record remember i told you you say get mapping then say public response entity response entity and i want to create a new model just called uh, let me create as a class and i call it user And then this user is going to be string username, string email, string first name, string last name. And I'll just say integer age. I don't want to retain a password. Remember here, let's make this private. Then let's create getters and setters. Generate getters and setters for all these fields. Then we can come to our controller. We want to retain a single user. Uh, this is the user that we created. And I just say get user. I want to create a, a dummy user here. User equals to new user then i just say user dot set age to 31 user dot set email to bisky at gmail dot com Set first name to biscuit. Or we just say last name. If you just type last name, um, sweet.
username it's going to be biscuit then we need to return return response entity and we can use it okay then we can return this user so if we test this endpoint we just this is a get mapping we can get this record so i can come back to our post mapping let's copy our url up to users here and let's come here so everything is starting with if you notice something every endpoint is starting with the users so yeah if you want to call this endpoint it's going to be users update profile if you want to call this here there's no there's no this there's no this path for this path so it's going to be just users so it's just differentiated for with getting mapping here it's a post mapping means it's different from this one so you must not have the same two methods which post mapping it you are going to have an error because it won't know which method to call so you have to then differentiate with with this path so you can now specify what's the what's that a api does so someone would understand so here it's a it's a get and it's a user so if i do this you can see i'm now getting this record as a i'm now getting this record with the details that i added so this is the get ma mapping so the next thing if you want to delete a record what you can do you can come here we uh, what you can do we just say it delete mapping public a response entity then you can put a question mark or others they just say void it's okay i can say delete user and then we just say return response entity dot status http here it's created but here we don't have we can say no content so that the record will be we are going to delete a record and we don't retain anything so this delete it will work and we are going to have 204 but i want to you let's 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 try to do this here i want just want to show you that the endpoint is working so we just copy this same or we just do this here we change the method type to delete and you can send this request and you can see the response code is 204 is the one that we implemented on our api so there are things so if you want to delete an existing record here you can see here we have a user code a uh, username bisc let's say you want to delete a record let's say in my user every user is an id if you are implementing this and let's say i just say id and let me generate this generate getter and setters for the id so it's better for you to understand with id so the first user on our database to be created the id will be let's say id one so if you try to get this record with the id one you can get this one so what i want to do here i just want to copy this private list user and i just say new array list so when creating a user i just want to create this user i just say user dot add it requires a it requires this this list so i will just copy this and the information that we put there will be added 
then just say user here and I'll paste it here so here for for you for for an ID for an ID let's make it a random set ID I think we have you you ID this one random dot to string a random ID will be generated here I made a mistake here it's supposed to be set ID so I want to remove this implementation here I want to show you something then on edge let's remove edge here we don't have edge email we have an sorry email we have it we can get the email from this first name we have it from our requests dot first name we can have a last name and you can have our username so this record we are going to add this in a list it's just a temporary then if you want to get a record we have these users let's say we want to update a record so what you can do we just say dot stream filter we want to look for the user whereby user dot id is equal to so here i want to show you something that we can do we can do this here we want to when you're sending a put mapping we must pass an id of each record so what i can do i just say we can add this and it's going to be a path variable and here we just say id and after that here we just say add path variable I'm now introducing you to the path variable and you just say string ID. So this ID, so it means when updating a profile, we must send the ID of that user. So here it will be if it's called to this ID dot find find first or else return now. So if the record does not exist, this one, if this record is does not exist, if it's now, if it's assigned to now, let's say the user that you want to update is not does not exist, we can return a four a we can return a four zero four means the record is not is not there. So we just say not found here. And in our body, we just say build. So the record does not exist, so we can return 404. If it exists, we can update we can update the user. We can update this user with this information. Set last name based on what we have here. last name first name and we can we can now update our age because on this endpoint we have age and it's an integer and we can send this record here it's now requires it now requires this so we can retain this user here we just say user which we find here no problem about doing this so for get is just going to be the same the get if the user doesn't exist we can retain a 404 
we can return a 404 or we can return this user so like what we did for get mapping we need to specify let's also specify the path variable which is an id and here we just say add annotation add path variable string id so if you want to delete a record we just delete a record that is in what in this list so for a delete we just do the same copy this path variable and here implementation to delete to remove to remove item from list so this is your homework you have to remove this item from that list uh, from this from this users list so that's all that you are supposed to do here so i want to create a, a one method that you can retrieve all the users that we already saved so it's going to be a get mapping so let's copy this get and i can say get this one uh, i want to say get all and here it will return all users that we have response entity users and here it's going to be a list of user so this endpoint we just return all users and this one for delete this one for get so now we are now storing the these users in this uh, list so we can make this final and let's test this endpoints that we created so for our post this is also our put this is also our post method so for our post method a a new UID will be created so if i send a request like this we have now we have one item let's add the i just say biscuit 2 and email it's going to be biscuit 2 also so let's send this so we have two items so let's let's test the items that we already have it's a gate mapping remember i told you it's going to be a get mapping and with a path variable o so we want to get all the users so you can see all these users are now being uh, are now being saved here as you can see when we added those users in the list we are creating these unique ids for each user so this is the same that way that you are going to implement when you are saving records in the database so the next thing that you want to do we want to get this user with this id so we just copy this user and we can go to our here we need to change here to get mapping and i told you we added a path variable so in this path variable is just add a forward slash and an id so if you try to get this user you can see this user already exists so if i try to modify this id to put a three here you can get a 404 because this user is not exist on our on our list because the only users that we know exist are these ones that that are uh, in our list so i think now you have learned how to create a user you have mastered this you have mastered to update a record so to update a record is just the same we need to add so let's come back here and try to update one of the records and this is the copy and we can come to the put mapping so in our put mapping you have to specify the id that you want to update this is the id we want to update with with these details then we can send a request so you can see we have updated this user 
with this request let's see if we do our get or if our if the record is then updated you can see the first name and last name for this user has been updated if we come back also to the post mapping if i update on the put mapping i can update the year the age to 33 now you can see if i do get all year you can see the age has been updated for that user so this is the way you can update a user on your to update the profile this is how update works and this is how you can get all records so there are things that you maybe you want to know more so let's say this is, we want to get a let's say you want to get a users with the email that starts with the username that starts with bisc so let me copy this and we just say get username like here we just say search we want to search for a specific user so on our list here we need to add like there's what we call the request parameter you want to send a username on our query parameter with the bi so what we can do i can say it request mapping it it request param sorry we can say it request param string user name we can pass a username if the username start with the bi we can retrieve all to de all details with the so we just say users dot stream dot filter and in our filter we want to say user dot username contains contains username then here we just say to lowercase and here or start with or we can just say start with and this username let's make sure that it's also in lowercase then collect to list and we can get the so if the username or the users in this list if we start with the with the details like he, with the if it start with bi we can get this record so here it's going to be a request parameter a request parameter if you go to your url let's copy it's going to be search and here it's going to be username we want to search by username so what you can do you can copy this get and let's come here and here it's no longer o yeah let's let's just test with o okay every record the details were deleted after after what reload so here just say search and for search you want to search by username equals to bi so so far we don't have any records so the the list is empty so let's go to our post mapping and create a username this one start with biscuit 2 and i can send a request and we can get another one which is a biscuit then i can come to the new method we are just want to stay search for users that start with the bi so we have two users that start with bi if i come back here in our post i want to create another user that username does not start with bi that's sddd after doing that if i come here if i send this request it's supposed to return two records only two records let's say we want the users that start with sd we can now retrieve this only one user because the other is starting with bi so here you have learned the request parameters and how you can use request parameters 
and you are now understanding the request parameters the username we have to add a question mark your username here like this if you just say request parameter it means you are sending it you are requesting with query parameters so these query parameters are separated with the end so this is what you, the other thing that you can do if you don't want that uh, do you can do this if it's if you if you don't want to send a request so default required by by default the required is true so you can just say here false and default value you can just say bi so if i don't pass the value it will just search or user start with bi so that's how it works so if i create here let me create this one i just say okay i can do this if i come to the end point here if i remove this our end point will work but it does not it look for something that starts with the bi but if i edit this and do this this record will be retrieved so the default if it's not there you'll be forced to add this variable so that's why i said if it's default use this uh, default values so you can know more about request parameter and you can further research about it so this is what i wanted to teach you about rest and i think you have learned a lot you have learned how to retain status code how to what is a gate mapping what is a post or the http methods and i also teach you a uh, how to handle these errors uh, in case the record does not exist how to retain 404 by learning those simple basic concepts you can develop a powerful restful, restful api so if you are new to this channel make kindly subscribe click you know, the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever we upload new video let's meet another video tutorial salut coders